Hi, everybody. This is the agenda for the Wethersfield Senior Citizen Advisory Committee for Thursday, February 17th, 2022. Um, and members present, um, we have Phyllis Garcia, Henry Hornet, Eunice DeBello, Chris Taylor, Sylvania Flattery, and our council liaison, Tom Mazzarella. Did I miss anybody? All right, then. We're good to start our meeting. Welcome, everybody. And um, I would start with the minutes of January 20th meeting that Amy sent out. Um, are the minutes okay? Any changes? Sorry. <laughs> okay. I don't believe we have a quorum. Let me just count. Five. Six. Yeah, we might have a quorum. I could check it later. I don't have the list in front of me. Um, would somebody like to make a motion to accept the minutes? So moved. Okay. A second? Second. second. Okay. I'll take Henry this time and you the next time, Eunice. Okay. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Oh. <laughs> Aye. <laughs> Henry, are you opposed to the minutes or? No, no, I'm not. I'm in favor. Oh, okay. All right. Um, then the motion passes. So we'll go right into old business. So the, um, the spring event is the first thing up. And Amy gave me a little update that I can let you know. And I think you all know Amy sent out that she was not able to make today's meeting. So she let me know that she spoke with the woman, Betty, at the Central Connecticut Health District, who is ready to do a educational program. They're working on confirming a date. Uh, they're looking at a few dates at the end of May. So they're working on that. And um, let's see, what else did she say? They're... Um, the, the, pres the presentation will include discussion points that would be COVID, healthy choices, nutrition, exercise, sort of how to stay healthy during these times. So they're working on that now and probably will be, um, as we get closer to the, um, to the next meeting, they'll be working on dates to figure out when's the best time to have it at the community center. And it's going to be staying, they're looking at staying healthy in 2022. And she doesn't have an exact, exact title yet, but is asking if any of us have any ideas. I thought staying healthy in 2022 sounded good, but I don't know what anybody else thinks. I, I, I I had uh, keeping healthy, but staying healthy is okay. Um, hang on one second. I just have to admit. Uh, so, yeah, I think Sylvania came in with her phone. So hopefully she'll keep us posted here. I, I guess the only thing is, is that the, this is going to be in May, possibly May. And that means half of 2022 uh, will be over. Good point. That's sad to think half of it might be over. Yeah, yeah. How about just staying healthy? Mm, that's, that's okay. Is it geared toward seniors? Uh, yes, it is. All right, then maybe we can say something in there um, or I can send some suggestions to Amy if that's how you want that done, Kathy. But, you know, maybe you say something to the extent, you know, um, you know, keeping healthy as we age or something. Sure, yeah, no, Amy was looking for suggestions. Okay. I'll pass on staying healthy. Um, I'll mention, um, uh, what did you say, Phyllis? You said staying healthy as we age? As we age. No, and if anybody thinks of others, you could certainly um, email to Amy and um, give her some ideas for sure. 
And we could probably finalize that at the March meeting because that would give us enough time for advertising and everything else. So I would think the March meeting kind of pulls everything together, particularly the date. So Kathy, what is, your, what is your sense about having this activity or this event at the senior center or at the community center? You think we'll be able to do that in person? I, I think so. I, right now, everyone is talking about numbers going down. And as we get more into the program, we'll talk a, a little bit more about the senior programs we're gonna look to bring back to the building. So I would like to hope by May that we could have a crowd and the banquet room is big enough to space out. So we can provide this, we could take the whole banquet room if we needed to and really take the space. Okay, and so then, if, if for some reason we cannot do it in person, then it's a no-go at all. There's no plan B. Amy has done some, some things by Zoom, but this one might be difficult to do. But okay. it's certainly up for discussion. Uh, you know, we could certainly see what we could manage. And we okay. just have to ask our IT people if we could do a big Zoom meeting. I don't know how you do that. Okay. But I'm, I'm, just, I'm just checking. That's all. Okay. Yeah, Phyllis, as a computer expert, you could tell us if we could do okay. <laughs> it. Can be, you know, it can be done. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, there's, there's no doubt about it. It can be done. You just have to figure out what that means and how to do it, right? Yeah. I mean, people do it all the time, and yeah. and you know, certainly it, it can be done either in a in a in a one setting, or people can log in, or it can be both. So you know. Anyway, I'd like for I'd like for there to be a plan B. I would I wouldn't want it to be canceled. I mean, there's okay. a lot of work that goes into this, um, and Betty will be preparing some kind of program. So it'd be nice that if we could pull it off, even if we can't do it in person. All right, that makes sense. Let me just make sure I read her notes. Let's see. Um, yep, that was that was uh, what she had said. Um, Yep, so that, that we covered that. So that's good. Anything else on the spring event? How long is it? What's the time? Is it a half a day? Usually it's, it's in the afternoon for an mm. hour, two hours, depending on what the presenters. Oh. Either. In the past, we've had a couple of presenters. We thought we'd be simple this time around and just have one presenter come. So I would think we'd look at maybe like a, a talk for nah, 30 minutes to 45 minutes. I'm not sure what Amy has talked to Betty about. And then I'm sure there'd be question and answers. So we just have to figure that out. So I'll put that in the notes uh, for Eunice, for how long will the event be? It just seems like a short time for such a big subject. And I think that's where uh, Amy will need to talk with the speaker and see yeah. what, you know, in the past we used to have like maybe three speakers that did 15, 20 minutes, you know, depending on their topic, they've done different things. So I think it's whatever we'd like to see that would make sense. But certainly you all have the input in that and what, what would be the best way to do it. And I think we were just trying to bring people in for a, a period of time, but because the other events used to have displays where they, you could walk around and see yeah. some things. And we're trying to be a little simple this year, just to be careful. It makes sense. Anything else on the spring event? And I'm just checking. Then we, we're, leaving, we're leaving on the agenda, the senior citizen informational brochure, we're still evaluating the information and putting that together. So when we actually have a draft to show you for your review, we'll get that to you. Are you looking for topics to put in? Um, if sure, if, if there's something you'd like to make sure we include, it's an informational brochure for the seniors in the community <clears throat> of what resources are available. All right, because of course I'd want to put in a plug for um, our computer group. I think that's already in. Okay. But 
but I'll write that down just to make sure we don't forget it. Probably we don't have the right name. We probably have the old name. Yeah, okay. No, we definitely would want to change it. But Amy may have already made that correction. Yeah. All right, uh, any new business that anybody has? Yeah, I had a question. I, I, I think that we lost our chair, is that right? And did we, did we decide on a chair? Did I miss that at the last meeting? We have not decided on a chair. I'd be more than happy to have someone want to be the chair. That would, if anyone's interested. <laughs> and I just check in to see if I missed it at the last meeting. <laughs> I think we were waiting to have more people, you know, but to, um, to try and get, you know, a few more, we, you know, we have a, you know, a member that wasn't able to make it. So, you know, we could put that on the agenda for the next meeting. And it, certainly if any, any member wanted to run the meeting, that would be terrific too, just to run the meeting and then decide, you know, a lot of times it's been whoever was interested in doing it, everyone else said, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so if That's anybody, not, so we can put that on the agenda go. for next week to, we call it an election of a chairperson, but it's a discussion of a chairperson. No, I was just thinking in terms of the, the, the chair also being a point of contact. And I don't know how people feel about that. I think it's very difficult, for example, for you to be a point of contact <coughs> for people in the community, Kathy, because you have a full-time job, the same with Amy. So I, and I saw it that way. And maybe I'm, I'm off base on that, but I thought that it would be nice to say, and this person is the chair, that if you have any questions, any comments, um, please email so-and-so or call them however we want to do that. Yep, we've always had a member of the committee be chair. It's never been any of the staff. So that's certain, but, um, and, and um, uh, oh, this is terrible. Why am I forgetting um, the name of the person who's now on the Board of Education? Janice. Thank no. you. Geez, I had a mental block. Janice was the chair and then she went to the board. So, um, so that's why we're without a chair right now. So all of you members can think about it. And um, if you're interested in it, you could certainly have a discussion with me or Amy about what it entails and what it could entail or what you'd like it to entail. It's always been to run the meeting and just assist with the committee. So that's how it's worked out. So that's something you could all think about. And then I could sit back and just listen. That would be good. <laughs> That's always my plan. Uh, any other new business? And I'm gonna move right into our updates and reports. And we're gonna start with Tom Mazzarella as our council liaison. Excuse huh? me, did you, can I ask you a question? Sure. Under new, oh, new business discussed possibility of holding meetings in person and remotely. Okay. Are we supposed to discuss that or has it been discussed? What it's been is we've had a directive from the town manager to currently do meetings by Zoom. Now, uh -huh. I'm sure that's gonna be evaluated as we're moving forward because like yourself, Eunice, everybody is asking um, if meetings can go back to being in person. Right. So um, I would expect we're going to hear something in March or in, well, we're almost in late February, so I couldn't say right. that. But um, I would think that that is going to be evaluated and looked at. You're, you're, I, would, I would ask if this commission is in favor of meeting in person or what your thoughts would be. Are you asking for an opinion now? Sure. I prefer the option, I prefer to do both. For those people who wish to attend in person and, and have the option for people to join on uh, Zoom. Yeah, but we said that we don't know exactly at the last meeting, wasn't there a discussion that you weren't exactly sure how to do it that way? 
Yeah, we just have to figure out. First, we have to figure out if that's legal. We just got it. We had. To, we just have to find that out, and that that is being looked at at the manager's level in terms of can we juggle all this. Um, so um, I'll make a note. I know I was supposed to check. Things got a little busy, but we can figure that out and do some research and have some information for you for the next meeting and see how we we might be able to do that. And that would be with IT and figuring that out. I'm, I know Phyllis is gonna tell me it's doable because we, doable. we certainly are doing it now. Yeah, and people do it all the time. To figure yeah. out how to set up a screen or something and make sure that we could do that legally. That would be my only concern. And I just don't know that answer yet. Anything else, Eunice, on that or, or anybody else? No, no, no. I was just uh, wondering okay. if we had followed up on that. I'm glad you brought it up. I know there are commissions that are anxious to meet again in person. And um, finally, February is really seeing the numbers going down. So that's uh, encouraging for sure. And I don't I'm, mind uh, meeting. Oh, sorry. I don't mind meeting on Zoom. It's not a problem. Okay. All right. We'll see what what transpires. Tom. Yeah, I'll, I'll uh, start off by talking about the uh, Zoom versus in person meetings. Uh, on the council, we've been working on that for almost four weeks. Uh, it's a little bit different situation because the town council, the way it's structured, whereas this is an advisory committee. So we're really going to have to check the rules because um, with the council, there's freedom of information issues. So we, we uh, spent a lot of time with the attorneys trying to figure out how we could have a hybrid system where someone could, we would have an in-person meeting, but perhaps one or two of the counselors would have to attend remotely. Um, there's a whole bunch of issues about being a public meeting and everybody being able to hear all the conversations on you know, the in-person side as well as the uh, remote people. So um, I think Kathy's probably gonna have to sort that out with uh, I guess the town manager to figure out um, the way I understand it, it's going to work as a general rule for all the committees is it's going to be a choice of either all Zoom or all in person. It gets difficult when you do the hybrid where some people are uh, remote and some people are in person. But um, it's not that it's not technically doable. It's just making sure that you meet all the requirements. We, we got into all kinds of issues like what happens if someone gets disconnected and they're not able to vote and you know um, uh, the meeting's not properly recorded where you don't have all the you know remote people might be recorded but the in-person people are not recorded or vice versa so it's a it was a real difficult issue we're going to hopefully vote on it tuesday tuesday evening but uh just a lot of back and forth to try and satisfy all the requirements. Um, other than that, there's a couple couple issues that I just wanted to share with everybody. Um, town council has been working on uh, two items. One of them is has to do with panhandling and uh, we're trying to come up with a solution to uh, um, get some of the, have a way of getting to these uh, people that are out in the streets, out in the uh, traffic, if you will. Um, we wanna be able to approach them and offer them some of the social services that the town of Weathersfield's very good at, you know, food insecurities or getting, uh, getting them the help they need for uh, housing, and, uh, maybe um, mental health issues and things of that nature. Um, there's a problem where the police department is not really allowed to go out there and and talk to these people without an ordinance in place that you know states that they're they're violating a traffic rule or um, 
pedestrian safety is really what we're after. I don't know if your <clears throat> people have been out by uh, Jordan Lane and Silas Dean Highway. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they typically they're, they're out there at all hours, day and night. They're wearing dark clothing. They're on this little, you know, two foot wide island. And to me, it's just a matter of time before someone gets hurt. Um, there's not a lot of cases of it being aggressive. I have had some complaints from people that were in the uh, gas station um, parking lot, you know, going in for a coffee and being being approached by somebody asking for money. And, you know, the person was felt intimidated and they ended up just driving away. So we're trying to come up with something that's that's fair. We're not trying to, you know, attack these people, you know, whether they have real issues or not, we don't know. Um, but really just to, to head off the safety issue and uh, like I say, get them the help they need. So that's been another, you know, there's a lot of legalities involved. Of, you know, people have uh, the right to free speech and they're allowed to be out and about in a public place. and. So we're, we're, uh, we've been working on that for two weeks now. Again, we have lawyers involved to tell us what we can do and what we can't do from a, from a legal standpoint. The, the second issue is, um, I'm sure you're all aware that Canada, uh, sale of cannabis in Connecticut has been legalized. And uh, the town at this time does not have any uh, zoning regulations to either address where uh, cannabis could be sold or if it could be sold. And, and uh, so we're working on um, trying to get the consensus from, from the town and all the stakeholders of uh, should we prohibit it, uh, sale of cannabis outright in the town or should we uh, address which areas of town it could be sold and, and all these um, various restrictions. Uh, we've had um, speakers from uh, social services, the police department and uh, health district um, giving their opinions to the council. And again, we're trying to analyze all the evidence and you know what we can do legally, what we can't do, uh, getting a lot of input from residents and uh, Hopefully we'll come up with a conclusion here in a short time. At the moment, the town has enacted a moratorium on the uh, application for a uh, retail outlet for uh, cannabis sales. That's gonna expire in a couple months. So we need, to, we need to wrap this up, figure out which way we're gonna go. Other than that, we're just a little calm before the storm. We're gonna start working on the budget. Um, We've been meeting with uh, various departments and committees about uh, what we should spend uh, federal dollars on and what we should uh, keep in our budget for uh, for the next year. So that's about it. If anybody has any questions, I could try and answer. Tom, um, is, is the town council interviewing people for the manager position? Yes, uh, we've uh, we contracted with a firm to to uh, gather all the applicants. We uh, just had our first go around. We had uh, 25 people apply for the position, and we have a committee of uh, several counselors that are um, narrowing the field down. And then the firm that's doing the search is going to you know, take this narrowed down group of about seven people. And now we're gonna start asking them more questions and doing a little deeper dive into their, their background, their, you know, their resumes and all that. And eventually we're gonna bring a small group into town to meet all the department heads, um, meet the residents, tour the town and the facilities, things like that. And then we'll uh, hopefully come up with a a finalist, wrap that up. Um, still gonna be, <clears throat> we're talking about mid-April mid to uh, get the finalists and selected. 
So you're looking at hiring uh, in mid-April or you think it might get into May? No. Well, you know, you would make an offer, but still you have to negotiate that. And, right, yeah. uh, people may have to relocate, uh, you know, give their current employer a month's notice. So, yeah, okay. you know, sooner the better. We're trying to do it as fast as we can. <laughs> It's a, it's a tedious process. Right. No, I can imagine. And, and hopefully Bonnie will stay until the, the person is selected. And, and yeah, she on. likes to tell me that she's going to leave every day. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm a big Bonnie fan, I have to tell you. I wish she would stay permanently. She's doing a very good job for us. Yeah, just like she did the first time around. So, But she is you know, retired, so. Yeah, no, I get it, I, I get it. She didn't submit an application, I can tell you that. <laughs> I, I don't blame her, and I wouldn't even broach the subject with her, because I know what she would say. <laughs> I, I gotta tell you, I, I feel, uh, you know, I let her get situated, and then I hit her with three or four things on one day, and she's, she kind of replied back, well, I don't know if I'm coming in tomorrow. <laughs> I, I, I just go back home. <laughs> well, thank you, Tom, for the update. Yeah. Anything else for Tom? Okay, then we'll move on to the senior center. And Amy did give me some notes to make you aware of that they're currently doing programs in person. And we're looking to bring back bingo and set back soon, probably in March. Attendance is approving. She's planning and scheduling more lectures for both um, programming and for the upcoming months. It, she's currently putting plans in place for the spring and the summer. Um, so yeah, we are, um, we've been working hard at keeping an eye on everything, particularly with the bingo and setback, because um, we are getting requests to come back and we're hoping that that, and we're, 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 we've got our fingers crossed that yes, that will happen in March. I thought they were doing, someone told me they were going to set back at the center. Are they, do they have it now? I mean, I don't, I don't play cards, but I thought, they said they were going to the senior center. Um, I, I'm, I don't think so. Okay. I don't think so. At least that's not the way Amy's message reads. I know she was, they were talking about it and. Um, okay. I must have misunderstood. Yeah, no. no uh, uh, Weathersfield's not open for setback yet. I think a lot of, uh, Members that did play in Wethersfield are going to Rocky Hill in Newington. Okay. I, I don't think Newington, but Elmwood. And, uh, so I don't okay. think they're going to our senior center. Oh, okay. uh, I don't well, think that... Newington's open yet. No, I don't think so either. I think uh, it's Rocky Hill is open. Yeah, I, yeah Rocky yeah. Hill is Okay, uh, so they're probably going there. Okay. Elmwood. <laughs> yeah, but Amy has been making plans to bring them all back and again, use the whole banquet room potentially again, to be safe and space everybody out. And um, so I think a lot of things are gonna change in the next week or two. I, that's at least what we're thinking today. So hopefully that's the case. Anything from Amy's report, anything else? Um, just Kathy, I, I know that she is working on that um, display. Remember, she mentioned it at the. Oh yes, lunch, yes. That she is working on that. Um, I went to Glastonbury to see if they had something. I because I really thought that Glastonbury Senior Center would be very advanced with the technology and etc. They have nothing. Okay. Um, so uh, Amy has been working with I think a Weathersfield's IT group to see what can be done. So she's moving along with that. Yeah, we actually did have a meeting. We kind of identified the process we have to go through and she was gonna follow up on a couple of things with IT um, and also with uh, maintenance in terms of 
if it's going to go here, can we put electricity? Can we put an outlet here? Things of that nature. So all of that has been identified and at least is in the works to figure out how best we can do this. Right. And I guess I'm, I'm a little anxious to get it done because we had a donation mm -hmm. of $1,200 that was donated to the, the uh, Tech Help for Seniors group on behalf of one of our volunteers who passed away last year. So I don't want the family to think we're doing nothing with that money. So, I mean, this is not, I'm not blaming Amy because I know this takes a, a while, but you know, I'm really pushing this through. So whatever help she needs, I've made myself available to help. Oh, her. terrific. Yeah, they, they had to investigate uh, electrical power, um, the type of line, uh, computer line that had to go to what the area and what was it gonna take? So, they, so that's, in, that's in the works. So I think she's waiting to get some of those answers back because then that'll determine, because then we can determine size and, and look at all that. And we'd like to get the work done prior to purchasing the unit. So we make sure we, write, we get the right stuff there that we can hook everything into. That's my words, that's not the technical words. Yeah. They have all the technical words that they tell us. And I'm like, can you just, you know, we just want to put it on the wall. What's it going to take? So, um, so yeah, and I know we talked about our IT department has a, um, what, I, what I call a ticket system where we, we write in all our questions and then they get back to us. So that's worked out really well. And that's, that's all in the works. Is, it, is that for the screen that you were talking about? The unit that you put, are you talking about some unit that you're putting in? We're looking at, uh, um, Phyllis mentioned that they got a donation and they want to use it to buy what I'm going to call a TV screen. That's what a, I thought you, yeah. It's a display screen that will be able to put on it information. Like and welcome to the building. Yeah. That's what you're envisioning, correct, Phyllis? Right. Right. I mean, and Amy said there were other things too, where you put the programs up, you know, and I saw it as being really a, something where people can go in and see what's going on. She said there were systems where you can actually go in and enroll for classes using that system. I mean, there's a lot that can be done, but, you know, and I told Amy, I said, if you shoot for the stars, because we've got plenty of money and if we push, we'll, maybe we'll push in some more of a donation to the senior center to get it done. So I told her, I said, think of what you'd, you'd want and let's go for it. So there's a lot of things that you can do with that kind of a system. Okay, anything else on that? Okay, next up is our elderly services coordinator, Chris Taylor. Thank you, hey, Chris. Kathy. Thank you, Kathy. So I just uh, wanted to point out that um, I took care of 43 new clients last month at the end of January. Uh, we continue to, um, uh, to, to, you know, meet the needs of the uh, seniors here in town. Um, I think I took my 200th application today <laughs> for <laughs> energy assistance. So <clears throat> and that's out of a total of two, uh, 352 applications taken so far at the end of January. Um, I wanted to, did everyone get a, a copy of the free home repair application through the First Church of Christ? Yes, I know I, I had did. sent that in as an attachment. Yes. Okay, yes. good. So, yeah, so the First Church of Christ, they had a meeting with us several weeks ago and they have, uh, they're working with a group called Work Camps Home Repair, and they're offering the, um, you know, volunteers are coming in for one week. And I guess there's individuals and youths all around the country coming in, and they'll be doing projects here in Weathersfield from June the 26th to July 2nd. Uh, so the application that I sent to you, you know, if, if you know of anyone here in town that would like to get free repairs, they take care of all the cost. So it's, you know, they do the labor and materials are offered um, no cost to uh, people here in town. Uh, and it's a, you know, very short application. They can fill that out. 
Um, they do things like porch repair, construction, step repair, exterior painting, uh, interior painting, weatherization, wheelchair ramp repair. Sometimes we have people too that call and they need a wheelchair done or they have a ramp and it's, you know, in disrepair. So they can probably finish something like that in a week. Um, and minor roof uh, replacements, you know, very minor. <laughs> And uh, so the application could be filled out and it, this can go to First Church of Christ. You can mail it directly to them. And I have copies. They left me with multiple copies here in the office. So if you know of anyone, please refer them to me. I would be glad to um, get an application to them. And um, I don't know if everyone is aware this came out from CMS um, on February the 3rd, but um, there, there will be um, eight free over-the-counter COVID tests available to Medicare beneficiaries in early spring. Uh, and this is for people on Medicare B. And so um, they, I, you know, if anyone's interested, I know they didn't uh, provide the um, eligible pharmacies and other participating entities where the tests can be available. So, um, it says here, this is the first time that Medicare has covered an over-the-counter test at no cost to beneficiaries. And it says here, you can request um, the free over-the-counter test for home delivery at covidtest.gov. And um, I'll keep an eye on it too, to see if, you know, who is the participating um, pharmacies. Cause I, you know, there's no information on this. Um, email that I received, but that is a new benefit. So if anyone needs that, that is eight, I guess they get eight free over the counter test kits. And I uh, just um, wanted to mention too, on uh, um, the North Central Area Agency on Aging is the agency here in our area that receives funding from the federal government through the Older Americans Act. So there were four legislative priorities that I thought was interesting to our committee here today. Uh, one is that they're strengthening the home and community-based workforce. Um, there is a Connecticut home care program for people 65 and older. And this is uh, where the state helps people that, are, um, that need home care services. They provide part-time care. And uh, so they are looking, you know, that's one of their priorities is to strengthen that. And they do know that um, it's very hard sometimes to, the home care agencies are, are having a hard time attracting and sustaining new homemakers, companions and personal care workers. So, you know, they're um, advocating that, you know, uh, people, um, be supported that are looking, you know, for this kind of work because it's very necessary. As you know, as you know, people would like to stay in their own homes as much as possible. Um, the second priority that they have is protect older adults. And they're saying here, according to the Department of Justice, at least 10% of adults age 65 and older will experience some form of elder abuse. So they would like to see greater uh, coordination between state departments responding to allegations of fraud, neglect and abuse. They want to provide training for community level, level mandated reporters, which I am one of them, and a task force to consider proactive steps to coordinate supports for older adults in the case of a pandemic or other emergencies. So that's their second priority. Their third is increasing prescription drug affordability uh, so that drug costs can be reasonable because people still choose, you know, if they they're going to choose whether to take their medicines in lieu of, you know, they, they want to pay their rent or mortgage um, or pay for food, healthy food. And sometimes they skimp on the prescription. So, um, so they're looking at the priority and advocacy for increasing prescription drug affordability. And the final is here. I don't want to over take over talk the whole um, meeting here, but the final one is make Medicaid accessible to those in need. It's saying here, stating is to qualify for Medicaid, a resident must be impoverished or in, must impoverish themselves, I should say, bringing 
assets down to $1,600 or less. Connecticut has the lowest Medicaid allowable asset maximum set against the ninth highest cost of living. And they're comparing this with like New York and Maine, which offer asset protection of 16,800 and 10,000 respectively with many other states allowing assets of 2000 or more. So I just wanted to point that out that is on their priority legislative list. And that's pretty much about it. I'm, I know that, um, you know, we're meeting, you know, people are coming in for food bank and uh, all kinds of different concerns that they need. The veterans too are being assisted with various needs and, uh, and that's pretty much all I have to report today. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Any questions? Yeah, yes, I have a question for Chris. Hey, hi, Chris, how are you doing? Hi, hi, how are you doing, Henry? I haven't talked Good, to thanks. you in a while. <laughs> hey, is there any agency organization that's accepting uh, used handicap equipment, you know, walkers, transport chairs, um, adult diapers? Is there anybody uh, that's taking this kind of that's stuff? That's a good question, Henry. Thank you. Um, let me get back to the adult diapers. We do accept those if they're in good condition, you know, and they're boxed and everything else. Sometimes we get them and the bag is ripped. But if they're bagged and boxed, we do, you know, do take those uh, through our food bank and uh, people do request those items. So that's, I thank you very much for bringing that up. You know, people always need that and we try to make a bag for them when they're, um, you know, getting their food bank, uh, getting their food through the food bank. Um, as far as the medical equipment, um, there are several places that will take the donations. I know we no longer have the medical equipment loan program. We had it run through the town along with the um, Weathersfield and Rocky Hill Nurses Association, but the, uh, the very nice nurse retired and she said that's it and nobody else would take that program on. So uh, we refer people to like the Hospital for Special Care in New Britain. They've always been participating and helping us if we ran out of equipment throughout the years, you know, uh, they would always help Weathersfield residents and it's a free service. So Hospital for Special Care. Um, I don't have the number in front of me, but I, they're on Corbin Avenue in New Britain. And they have a little house next to the, ho uh, to the hospital and um, uh, that's where all their medical equipment is cleaned and stored and people you know, come in and pick it up. And um, also the other place that I, um, that I know some of our medical equipment went to was the West Hartford um, Town Hall. They have a medical equipment loan program there because people are still requesting medical equipment. You know, so we have to refer them but also they do take donations of medical equipment in good condition. Yeah. So, Who was that, Chris, uh, you broke up? I'm sorry, the, last... the uh, Farmington um, okay. Town Hall Social Services Department takes the medical equipment loan. Okay, thank you. Loans. Chris, I thought you said West Hartford. I'm sorry, I meant Farmington. <laughs> Farmington. Oh, Farmington. Yeah, yeah thank you. And then there's also an organization um, through Oak Hill School, which is the one in West Hartford, sorry. They're called New England Assisted Technology or NEAT. And they also take uh, medical equipment. But then what they do, they refurnish the medical equipment and then they resell it at a lower cost. So that's another choice you have if you like. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Henry. Okay, thank you. So I had a question for Chris as well, along the same lines as um, Henry's question. There was a, a group, Chris, of people in town who knit mm -hmm. and they make shawls, et cetera, and they wanted to make them available for seniors, specifically for seniors and disabled. Do you accept those? I think right now, I know that's on, we have that on a hold right now. We used to accept it, but we, uh, it's part of, you know, if they're making clothing and everything, our clothing right now is on hold. So, you know, maybe in the future, um, Kathy, like Kathy, you know, uh, when we reevaluate things with COVID and everything else, we would love to accept that. But right now it's every, that is on hold because people are not able to come in to pick out clothing and that's part of the clothing bank. 
Okay, so there's, there's a possibility that uh, that program will become available in the future. I hope so. I hope so, because I know people, you know, I, I thank you very much. That's very kind and generous that people knit things for people. And, um, you know, we did get quite a bit of donations in the past of knitted items. And they, I mean, people knitted hats and socks and gloves and beautiful blankets. And I mean, uh, but everything's on hold right now because of COVID. So, you know, and I know it's difficult to... Uh, focus on whatever the, re the the knitter has requested. For example, this particular group of people specifically wanted it to go to seniors or disabled. Are you mm -hmm. able to do that? If you took the donations, would you be able to focus on seniors and disabled? I don't know. I would have to ask Kathy if that's possible. I would be glad to do it, Kathy. You know. Yeah, I think we we just have to look into it, Phyllis. Um, just uh, because right now, as Chris said, we're not accepting anything with clothes at this point in time. But um, probably we could figure out a way, maybe through the senior center or something like that, that we could do that. So we could certainly, um, we may be able to do that. We don't like to say no to donations. We, and we like to honor what people want it used for. And we're good at that. So I would like to believe that we could do something like that. Okay, thank you. I'll pass the information on. I appreciate it. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you, Phyllis. Anything else for Chris? Uh, next up is Parks and Rec and Social Services. And Chris really covered the social services side as far as um, what staff are involved in and everything. And the parks and rec side were sort of in winter. And I was all excited back then when we had ice skating, but obviously the ice skating has gone away now for a while. <laughs> and Phyllis doesn't want to hear about it. <laughs> no, but I, I mentioned at the last meeting how nice it is to have the pond used for that. And then we had this, this bit of warm weather and I said, well, there goes the pond. <laughs> yeah, we made it for a while. <laughs> uh, so you never know. Um, and actually, staff are in the process now of planning for the summer programs, and we're kind of um, looking at, you know, getting more back into um, all of our camps and, and raising some of the numbers, because last summer we were trying to be conservative with numbers going to camp and doing the different programs that we had. And um, so staff are doing all of that now and getting ready and finding out when school is getting out because that impacts how the park and rec program goes. And then in the spring, uh, down at Spring Street, we do a fishing derby for the children. So, and what's neat is a lot of them come with their parents and grandparents who are teaching them how to fish. That's April 23rd, if you wanna drive by. And I have to tell you, it's the quietest special event we ever did. Everybody wants to catch a fish. So all the kids are quiet and their parents or, or grandparents. And it's neat to see them come with parents and grandparents. And we get volunteers from Unico and the Fish and Game uh, group here in town and who, who assist us because I'm great at watching them fish, but I'd rather have somebody who wants to take the fish off the hook and the kids can decide whether to keep it. They get to keep one fish or they can throw the fish back in and we actually stock the pond so that we do put trout in there. And so, and the kids catch some of the trout, they don't catch them all. But then the birds, for whatever reason, they happen to know when we do that and they come up from the Connecticut river and people tell me they watch for this. So it's kind of a neat event because somehow or other the fish live, the birds eat them, the kids eat them but it's quite a cute event and we're able to bring it back again this year. So that is coming up. So we always like to have some fun things, you know, that you can um, hear about and, and it is a, it isn't just a neat event. So that's, what's coming up in parks and rec. Any questions on anything from parks and rec or social services? Oh, I think we lost. I, we, we had Sylvania and, um, I don't see her now. I know she was having a problem. Let me just check, she was up next. Let me see if she emailed me anything. I should have, oh, she did. 
she's on both the phone and she tried to speak, but no one can hear me. So I'll just have to give her a call. So apparently she's having problems getting in. And we weren't able to hear her. She said she tried to speak when she was on the phone and I admitted her. I'll give her a call and update her and see if she has questions, but it looks like we lost her. Nope, I'm not seeing her on and I'm not seeing her with, uh, in, as a member of the participants. Nope, she was there before. Any other business from anybody? Any announcements? If not, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn if everybody's all set. I moved. I'm sorry, I didn't wait for anybody to speak up. I wanted to, to kind of get it in there before uh, you change your mind, Kathy. For uh, for adjournment? Adjourn, yeah, adjourn. <laughs> I didn't wait for anybody to respond that they had additional questions. I apologize. Um, well, um, oh, so you moved to adjourn, Phyllis? To adjourn, yeah. yeah. Eunice, did you second? Yes, I did. So <laughs> second. To adjourn. All right. Um, Everyone have a good um, a good week, and uh, we'll talk to you next month if not sooner. And I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. And we're good. Y'all have a good day. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one, everybody. Everybody. Enjoy Bye. Florida.